Hello guys, in this video I will try to use Laravel Cloud for the first time, but not on a demo project, on a starter kit, but on a real project that I use myself, real personal project, which is currently on DigitalOcean deployed with Laravel Forge, and I will try to move it to Laravel Cloud. This will be a longer video and the emphasis here on the word try, because it will not be as smooth as they show on stage as one minute deployment. One minute deployment does work, but the devil is in the details and I will show the details in this video. So the application is a very simple filament admin panel for my personal notes, inspirational notes, which I send myself via email twice a day just for inspiration. So from Laravel point of view, the application is very simple four database tables, users, notes, tags, and pivot table, filament admin panel with just one menu item, and then email sending. To prepare for Laravel Cloud, what I did with this application, upgraded it to Laravel 12 to the latest filament version, pushed it to a totally fresh repository on GitHub, and from here we will try to deploy it on cloud in almost kind of live coding mode of video. This is one of those weird videos where I would not be able to reshoot because when I click deploy, it actually happens and I cannot undo that. So without further ado, let's try and see what happens. So here I am in my empty Laravel Cloud dashboard. And the first thing that we need to do is to attach our GitHub organization account to cloud because we will deploy all our projects from GitHub. So new application, and here it asks to continue with GitHub or other sources. So I will attach my Laravel daily organization. So authorizing Laravel Cloud app, in this case for all repositories. Okay, I'm redirected back and now I need to choose the repository to deploy to Laravel Cloud. So I choose the repository of inspirational notes, name the application and then choose the region. I'm in Europe, so the closest to me will be probably Frankfurt. New application. And what happens now? I've counted that this took 17 seconds to this. So we have our application here. And by default, Laravel Clouds allows network things like DDoS protection, CDN and caching, but we will not use it directly for now. Also cloud domain is assigned automatically and we will try to change that. The assigned size to our droplet or server or whatever you call it is one vCPU with just 512 megabytes of RAM, which seems really low. But actually, I talked to Nuno Maduro at Laracon EU, and he explained that the architecture is a bit different. So to run Composer and to run a lot of commands, they use their huge infrastructure elsewhere, and then they deploy the application to my small server. And now without changing anything, let's try to deploy the application for the first time. I didn't change any settings, .env files or whatever. Let's just click deploy. We click deploy and this is what is happening on the screen. The seconds are running. I'm not sure Taylor on stage and other people kind of advertised it to be within one minute, but I will skip to the end and see what is happening and how many seconds it actually took. Okay, seems to be finished. 37 seconds and 10 seconds. So yep, within a minute, 48 seconds in total. And now we see the button visit. What does it do? We click and we have our application deployed on cloud. The homepage of my notes application is the default Laravel 12 homepage. The whole thing, the whole functionality is in the filament. So there's slash admin URL, which I'm not sure it would work because we didn't add the database, but let's try. Oh yeah, we have filament login screen, so it works. Now I want to make an experiment. Can I edit .env file and how? For example, the default name is notes. How do I change that? So from our deployment, we should navigate to settings, which has quite a few settings to choose from. So for example, it assigned automatically PHP 8.4 node version and a few more variables. And here's where we get to .env variables. And we don't have access to the full .env. So there are injected variables and then custom variables we can add on top. So if I click reveal secrets, this is the thing that I cannot edit. But on top, there's custom environment variables, which I can edit. So if I click reveal secrets, it has app key that should be hidden. And in here, I can add, for example, app name equals inspirational notes. And let's save and let's see what happens. 
it gives a warning overwriting variable. Yes, that's exactly what I want to do. And then I have a choice, save and deploy and save only. I think for .env I don't have to deploy, but let's try it. Save only, changes saved, and now if I refresh the home page, refresh, and now it doesn't take .env automatically, so I need to redeploy. Let's try to do exactly that deployment and we click deploy and it is finished in 42 seconds even faster than the first one and we refresh and here we have from .env from the redeploy.env our title our app name on the login screen now the next step is to add the database because currently there is no user to log in with and no notes imported from the previous server. To see the data I have Cedar prepared with SQL that looks like this. So three tables exported. So I need to just run PHP Artisan Migrate with Seed once. But first we need to create the database environment and we have add database. Create database. And by default, it suggests PostgreSQL, but in our case, I want to use MySQL. Currently, at the time of speaking, it is a developer preview and not recommended for use in production, but for my small project, it should be fine. I hope it works. Database cluster, name, I'm not even sure. Should I edit something here? Let's try to leave it as default. And here's where we see the price, the separate price of the database. So currently I'm on a sandbox plan of Laravel Cloud. So the usage of cloud is free for me, but the compute, so-called compute for servers costs money. And for transparency, I did get a discount code for usage while being on early access, but still it should show me the price for usage. So if I zoom in, database computes starts at $5 per month plus 20 cents per gigabyte. I shouldn't exceed one gigabyte. And let's try to create that cluster. Developer preview capacity reached. This is interesting. New database is temporarily unavailable. Well, yeah, I didn't expect that to happen in this video. They did announce that they released MySQL in the email, but at the same time, Taylor told that they would be releasing that a few weeks after cloud release. So I guess it's not officially out yet. But to be honest, in my case, my database should work on PostgreSQL as well. I don't use any fancy thing. It's just a belongs to many relationship here and there and just for tables. So let's try PostgreSQL and let's see what happens. And here's where I see different pricing. Database compute starts at zero per month plus 154 gigabyte. And I've heard them explaining on stage and behind the stage of Laracon EU that Postgres is serverless with hibernation. What does it mean? If your database doesn't get hit, doesn't get queries within like a few minutes or whatever you prefer in your settings, here you can see hibernate after 30 seconds. So it's five minutes by default. Then while hibernated, you don't pay for that database compute. This is why it starts at $0 per month. I probably will have to shoot a separate video after a while what was the actual pricing after a month with this project. But for now, let's try to create the PostgreSQL database. And for PostgreSQL, it succeeded, didn't throw any errors, and it has been successfully created. Okay, and I see unsaved changes. Should I deploy? Let's try to save and deploy. What will happen? I'm not sure. Deployments are free, so we don't have to pay for each deployment, and it should take under a minute, so we'll see if our project would still work, probably it generated the credentials in .env for PostgreSQL database, but we'll see what happens. And yeah, it is finished in 54 seconds. And now I'm curious about one thing, running deploy commands. Will it show us the actual commands? Because I'm interested in migrations. Does it run the migrations? Yes. So it did run the migrations. And now we have our database tables in PostgreSQL serverless database. And does our page still work? If I refresh, everything works. And if I try to log in with whatever, it should throw an error. Let's try to see if it doesn't throw database errors. 
No, it actually went to the database to check those credentials and showed the validation error, which is good. Now we have to see the data from previous database. And this is where I'm not sure it would work because my export is MySQL. So I have this .sql file with MySQL things exported from table plus, and I'm not sure that these would work. And also the database tables are not in the natural order, so it exported belongs to many pivot table first and only then I have insert into nodes and then tags and then default user. But first let's try as it is. We will see the error and actually we will see if there is an error how cloud shows the errors. So we need to run PHP artisan db seed. How do we do that on cloud? There's a tab called commands where you can add and run whatever you want PHP artisan. So here we do PHP artisan db seed. Fingers crossed, run command, application in production, command canceled. Right, yes, yeah, so I need to run that with dash dash force. Let's try again, run new command, db seed dash dash force. Run command again, socket handler write timed out. What does it mean? I've googled that error and found that it comes from monolog package for logs. So something is wrong with writing the logs. So there was some kind of log happened, probably error. Let's try to debug together. Click the logs here because it's in a separate tab. And here we go, application logs. Probably that SQL was too long to log. And yeah, we have syntax error for PostgreSQL. Here's the full log error if you're curious. So that happened a few minutes ago with Nginx and probably while deployment. And this is the actual error. So I need to change my SQL file, probably to not contain all those commands. So I will come back in a few minutes with a better SQL, probably suitable for Postgres. Okay, so now I've reformatted that SQL. I will push it to the repository and we will try to redeploy first and then rerun DB seed. Fingers crossed. Okay, so this is what I did in local terminal, git add commit and push to the repository. Now let's go to deployments on cloud. And actually it is automatically deploying after my push. It's already deploying. So I didn't click deploy manually. It's automatically deploying from my main branch probably. This is the default setting, which you probably can cancel or somehow change. Actually, let's go to settings and let's see if there is some kind of check to enable or disable that. Deployments, push to deploy. Yeah, so this is the setting automatically trigger new deployments. So you can disable that and also you can change build commands and deploy commands. So I can, for example, add seed here, but seed should be probably run only once. Let's see if the deployment is successful, deployed, great. Now let's try to run that command again for import of SQL file. If it's not successful, I'll probably search for some kind of PostgreSQL converter or we'll strip that SQL to something really minimal with one user so it would be successful for the demonstration. So run command and again, write timed out. If we go to logs and scroll up, this is again another log entry, which I don't even see in full, but something again is wrong with query. Okay, so for this demonstration, for this video, I will simplify the seeder to just have the user to log in with. So here's my new seeder. Let's just create an admin and let's see if we're able to log in to our nodes filament admin panel. Okay, here's our simplified seeder pushed to the repository and it should be probably auto deployed. We go to deployments and yes, it is deploying. Okay, deploy successful. Let's try one more time. Commands db seed force and will it create a user for us? Call it and run command class factory not found. This is interesting. So we use user factory here. User model contains has factory seems to be good, but maybe Faker is not installed because we're on production environment. So if we open Composer JSON, Faker is in required dev. And maybe because it's production environment, it just installs those. So another problem to solve. Let's go to settings and deployment. And let's double check the command. PHP artisan migrate. Yep, composer install no dev. Let's edit that to have dev packages as well. And let's 
redeploy. So yeah, it's kind of contrasting to the videos, to the ideal videos usually in presentations where they show that the cloud is up and running and working in a minute or in five minutes. Yes, ideally. But in real life with real projects, not just demos, a lot of things happen differently. A lot of configurations are different. People are running something maybe not ideal in the code. They don't know some settings. So this video, I already love it. This is a good example. It will be a longer video, but not everything goes as smoothly as on stage and on presentation. It doesn't mean that the cloud is bad. And of course, it will evolve and fix the UX and stuff like that. But as with every new tool on the market, a lot of new things to learn, to adopt to, to maybe fix or make differently in your code. So this is already great video from that point of view. Right, and it already takes longer running 42 seconds updating stack. Probably it is running now Composer installed without no dev. So it takes longer to download the packages basically. Yay, successfully finished. Environment stack took two minutes. So in total, three minute deployment, which is still great because by the way, it's zero downtime deployment. So it doesn't mean that your users will not get the access to the application for three minutes. No, it is actually deployed instantly, but the installation of packages and environment took longer in the background while the application is still up and running. And now one more attempt to run the seeder. Run command, seeding database info. It feels like it's successful. Okay, let's refresh our home page. Still working and let's try to log in with admin, admin and password. Is it successful? Forbidden. And of course, because in filament, I didn't grant the access for that specific user or in some other settings to access that admin panel. Another thing to fix and redeploy. So user model should contain can access panel. For now, I'm hard coding that to the specific email. This is filament specific thing. So if you don't work with filament, you don't really need to know about that. But basically, I'm granting the access to that user push to github and redeploy okay so the deployment is running and as soon as it is finished we will click visit and try to log in again and bad news this is powerless 15 minutes afterwards and unfortunately i didn't make it successful it still shows forbidden after a few more attempts i'm not sure why maybe it's some caching it feels like i did everything correctly according to the filament documentation returning true from can access panel. But since this video is not about filament, it's about cloud, I decided to stop here and call this video my first attempt to use Laravel cloud semi successful. So the deployments actually work, you can access everything the database works. And by the way, I will show you how to connect to the database. So in the official Laravel documentation Laravel cloud, there's a section connecting to your database cluster. So you go to environment, go to database and click view credentials, which gives you the credentials, which I pasted in my table plus and successfully connected to see if the user is in the database. So I wanted to double check if it is exist, it does exist. So the login doesn't work for some other reasons. I will debug them later and we'll shoot a separate video attempt to part two with probably MySQL also showing the sending the emails and scheduler, which was part of that application. So yeah, subscribe to the channel to get that future video and other videos about Laravel Cloud. Do you have any questions about Laravel Cloud? What should I test in the future videos or what should I show in the future videos? Or maybe I did something wrong. Feel free to criticize me in the comments. From Laravel Cloud point of view, I'm a noob user. I don't know much about it. I was just going through the default path, so to speak. So be active in the comments as well. But for now, that's it for this time and see you guys in another video.